Hi guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about my 20 plus pound weight loss that I have achieved within the last two months. And I feel like this is very highly anticipated and I'm really excited to share all the info with you today. So I'm gonna recommend that you guys grab a healthy snack, a drink, and maybe like a notepad and paper or whatever you will take notes on and just mark some of this information down because some of these are just so important and some of these foods I'm gonna mention and everything, like this is going to be very helpful. So so I suggest you do that and stay tuned and if you are really serious about this definitely watch the whole thing because the whole thing is going to be jam-packed of information. Little disclaimer, I am not a professional, I am not trained, I'm not a doctor. This is just all speaking out of my personal experience and coming from me and what's worked for me. So obviously at the end of the day what has worked for me might not work for everybody. We're all different, we have different bodies, different metabolisms. And if you want to follow me on Instagram and keep track of my weight loss journey and photos of what I'm looking like and things like that, definitely follow me. My at is at olivia.cara. I will leave the link in the comments in the description. So a tiny little backstory about my weight loss is I actually did a weight loss journey, which a lot of you guys might know, in 2019. And I went from 167 pounds to about 137-ish. And then um, my lowest was 134 around that time. And I was staying around like 138 though. So that was amazing. That was so exciting. And I ended up getting the weight back. That's okay. Things happen. Never be hard on yourself. And to be honest, I always have self-love and I didn't even notice. So for this health journey, I started on December 1st. I was about 160 pounds. So I had basically gained all my weight back that I had lost in 2019, which also mind you, my highest ever was about 178. I am five feet tall, so anything on me, literally like two pounds, you can tell. Whether it's a loss or a gain, like you can tell on me because I'm so short. It definitely shook me to my core and I knew I had to do something about it because I just want to prove to myself that I I'm not just gonna go back and let it be and like gain more weight back. Like I'm just going to nip that in the bud and make sure that I don't do that again. And I never ever wanna go back to that place again because I just know how I feel and I do not feel as good when I'm heavier whatsoever. Not just physically or anything like that, like mentally, spiritually, everything. I just don't feel the same when I'm not eating healthy, treating my body right, getting physical activity. And before that, I basically yo-yoed my whole life as you guys know. So let's start off with the first thing. The first thing is so so important and it is the mindset switch you have to switch your mindset just realizing I don't feel good I can feel better I can do more for myself like I don't have to settle for a body that I'm not 100% comfortable in and that you know just isn't healthy like it really didn't matter how I looked but I knew internally I was not healthy I was feeding myself awful things and I was literally sitting on the couch all day so I would eat like multiple chocolate chip cookies every day I was getting back into a cycle of just not feeding my body anything healthy and your mindset just really has to switch what is that goal what is that thing that makes you really want to switch your mindset for me it's like okay I'm getting older it's only going to be harder to lose weight in the future my prime years I'm wasting them not fully and truly loving myself you know raves and festivals that sounds so stupid and minuscule but the way that festivals and knowing how I'm going to feel and how confident I'm going to be to go meet friends and how confident I'm going to feel in photos and just walking around it gives me this motivation to keep going and that sounds so weird and like I hope it doesn't come off you know like self-centered or anything like that or like I'm only doing this to look hot in rave outfits because that's not the case at all but that is something where when I think about it it gets me excited and it keeps me motivated you have to find that thing that keeps you motivated and you have to have the switch the mindset switch is everything another huge motivator is just knowing how much energy I was gonna have and knowing if I got back into the gym and lost weight like how much traveling and going to festivals and doing these things that I want to do would be easier on me and easier on my legs, my knees, my everything, you know? Like, you don't have those same pains. And like I said, I'm only getting older. So I wasn't trying to reverse the weight loss when I'm like 30 plus. I'd rather do it now when I'm 26, get to a healthy weight and learn health and fitness actually and learn how to cook and do all these things instead of waiting till I'm older and then it's gonna be harder to lose weight. It just has to kind of click within you. You have to be ready and you have to stick to 
it. There was nights where I would look up pictures of donuts and I still sometimes watch people do donut mukbangs because for some reason I just want donuts so bad, but I refuse to cheat right now. And obviously I'm gonna have a donut in the future. My point is, is I wanna prove to myself that I can do it without getting off track and taking a bite of something and it tasting so good that I start to slowly fall off track because that's what happens every single time. So I promised myself basically that I would not cheat for like three months. That doesn't mean I'm not feeding myself. That doesn't mean I'm not healthy. And I'm not whatsoever telling you that you can't have a treat. You absolutely can have a treat. And for a lot of people, just having that one thing, it's always known to be better because then once you have it, you stop craving it and then you can stay on your diet. But for me, it's not even about that. It's about proving to myself that I can do it. And I know I will treat myself here and there when I am at my goal weight and when I need to start maintaining my weight instead of just steadily losing. I know I'll get there, but guess what? The body doesn't need donuts. The body needs healthy nutrients. So I'm not as worried about it. It's more just my love for sweets and my love for fatty foods that is wanting things like donuts right now, but does my body actually need it? No. And literally the craving has only gotten less and less for the last like multiple weeks maybe the last month I rarely crave anything or watch those videos anymore so once you wean your body off things like sugar and donuts and cookies and pastries your body doesn't need it anymore it doesn't want it as much it actually craves a strawberry banana smoothie or it craves a chocolate protein shake for real but never ever deprive yourself obviously this is obviously an extreme way you know you really do not have to diet like this or go to any kind of extreme or say I can't have that you don't have to tell yourself you can't have something you you have to figure out what diet way works for you and for you it might totally not be being so strict on yourself but for me and me knowing my personality type and how much I've yo-yoed in my life and how much my diets fail sometimes I needed to do that for myself food is just not my priority anymore it's not what I think about the most I used to think about it all day every day I used to get so excited to eat while watching shows and watching YouTube and I would just eat 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 to feel good it really releases something in your brain like food was a coping mechanism for me I think as well using food as a coping mechanism will never ever be good for you and there's other ways I recommend like going to the gym as a coping mechanism if you're angry upset just need to get energy out anything sad go find a coping mechanism that is not food and a lot of times when you use food as a coping mechanism you go to the unhealthy foods as well like you know if you're eating like celery go ahead go do it all you want but for me before a coping mechanism would be like okay going to get fast food going to get a dessert things like that ice cream and not everybody emotional eats but I definitely think I did a little bit I do intermittent fast I intermittent fast from 10 to 6 and a lot of people don't like intermittent fasting they don't think it's good for them and that is completely fine you have to make sure that it's right for you it can be a little bit hard especially in the beginning because your body's getting used to it and you will definitely find yourself feeling a little bit hungry. For me, a lot of this is about discipline. A lot of this is not about anything other than just proving to myself that I can put my mind to something and do something. And I'm not gonna lie, I think I felt really out of control of my life there for a second. And so that's why I felt like, okay, the only thing I can do to make me feel in control right now is start this diet. And I kind of feel like that's why I did it because I wanted to feel in control of something. I wanted to prove myself that I could do something. Some people love intermittent fasting, some people hate it, but what I can say is from 10 a.m. to 6 a.m. is my eating window, so I can only eat from 10 to 6, is the way that works for me. It is the way that helped me lose weight in 2019, and it is the way that helped me lose weight now. You have to be in a calorie deficit for your body's maintenance. So if you're adding exercise, definitely make sure that you're eating more. If you're just sedentary and uh, your body has like kind of a low maintenance calories, then, you know, adjust your food. Eat less calorie dense foods. So like, you know, more vegetables, more proteins, things like that, that are kind of low in calories, but you can eat more of it to feel satiated. Uh, for me, that's definitely greens and protein. I do not count calories. I don't think that it is necessary, but I know it works for a lot of people. I can just kind of guesstimate with what I'm eating because I do stick to foods that are lower in calories. Like I really try to stay away from the feeling of like obsession about it. Only weigh yourself once a week. I weigh myself every single Monday morning and that's it. Um, back in 2019, I used to weigh myself like every single day because your body fluctuates through the week. But once it gets to that next week, that next Monday, then I'm like most likely down. I've never once got on the scale and had it go up. And we know that feeling like if you weigh yourself too much, 
and it keeps going up and down you start to feel discouraged and then you might get off your weight loss journey so that's why I don't weigh myself all the time because I don't want to see the water fluctuations and feel discouraged be like I'm trying so hard I'm doing so much but I'm not steadily losing but when you weigh yourself once a week you do steadily lose better at least in my opinion at least in my experience you will never see like a steady weight loss weighing yourself every single day or multiple times a day you will see it fluctuate because that's what your body does through the week <laughs> exercise is a little tricky because I did not exercise for the first month I only recently within the last month I think January I started the gym and it is now February and I started going to the gym about three to four times a week I don't do anything super crazy and I don't do weightlifting right now my opinion is I would like to do cardio right now my recommendation on working out is that you don't start off too hard at the gym once you start your weight loss journey say you're starting your weight loss journey today I don't think you should go balls to the wall at the gym I don't think you should go super hard you need to get your eating right first because at the end of the day eating is the most important part of weight loss so in my opinion I said okay instead of burning myself out and feeling exhausted and just going way too hard all at once I'm gonna learn health I'm gonna learn how to cook I'm gonna learn what foods that I need for my body what my body responds to and you know see what happens and then I'm gonna add in the gym and that's exactly what happened I lost 10 pounds within a month so that was December I lost 10 pounds without working out technically I'm sure you could do weight loss without working out do I recommend it absolutely not and it definitely speeds up the process because once I hit a plateau so I started at about 160 and I hit a plateau at like 147 146 and so that's actually when I started working out I lost about 14 pounds before I started working out but once I worked out I kid you not I lost like almost four pounds the next week kind of confuse your body because if your body is losing Losing all this weight it's gonna eventually be like whoa 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 stop let's see and you're not gonna lose weight as fast if you start switching things up and you start going on walks and working out or you do something totally different or you start adding in like a bunch of carbs for like a week and then you take them all out the next week and only do proteins and greens and things like that like you're kind of confusing your body and that's what I have figured out works for me it's just what works for me I don't know if it would work for everybody like some weeks for me will be very carb heavy and then some weeks for me will be very very low carb will I ever cut out carbs absolutely not and do I recommend it absolutely not because I can pretty much only go to the gym on carbs I can't just sit and eat protein and green juice all day and expect to feel amazing especially with energy levels and especially for the gym so I definitely would recommend keeping carbs in your diet and not doing fad diets like keto or anything like that I do not recommend certain diets like that I think maybe they work for other people maybe they're great I don't know I have cut out cheese for my diet and I would genuinely like to be vegan and I really really wholeheartedly want to be vegan it's very hard for me right now I'm currently not 100% vegan I'm very very close and I know a lot of vegans don't like when you say that but it just is what it is my diet now naturally is very vegan but the proteins that I do still have in my diet that I kind of need right now and are a big part of my diet right now is chicken salmon and eggs I definitely could easily do an egg substitute I just haven't gotten around to try them yet but I would love to try just egg and things like that but but for right now with how much I still need a good source of protein in my diet to keep seeing the results I'm not officially 100% vegan I will be working on it I cut out cow and pig a long time ago by the way I have not had cow and pig for years at this point oh it's been a year just about a year just saying I would like to be vegan I do think a vegan lifestyle you would see amazing weight loss results but right now I'm close enough and I have made certain changes so I'm proud of myself for that and I cut out cheese which was my biggest thing stopping me from feeling like I could ever become vegan I was like I'm so obsessed with cheese like my whole entire life my whole adulthood and all of a sudden I lost my attachment to cheese and also stopped eating it to see if it would help my weight and it definitely did I feel like I've been losing weight even more like steadily and fast having cut out cheese I honestly think cheese is a huge culprit cheese and sugar are very big culprits for weight gain at least for my body you can't burn out if you want to keep going and reach your goals you got to keep fucking going so you can't do things that'll burn you out you can't go to the gym seven days a week I think that's insane some people do it maybe they want to and that's completely fine if you enjoy it and you genuinely want to go seven days a week that's amazing could never be me but I do love the way the gym makes me feel and trust me like once you get going in the gym though like you will feel so good and you'll see the weight come off even faster 
faster and it's just amazing you can also do other things you don't just have to go to a gym you can swim you can run at the park you can play a sport you can do things like that but you have to get active at some point in your journey if you want to see lasting and continuous results so yes I cleaned up my diet to basically whole foods and it's been amazing I learned how to cook so that's a big difference between my 2019 weight loss journey and right now is that I learned how to cook so I make things in the air fryer make things in the pan on the stove in the oven and I would did not do that before I do feel like my 2019 weight loss was a lot of like snacks and things like that and just it wasn't even like me eating whole foods and I remember getting some comments back then like there's nothing real it's all processed and I like didn't understand because I literally didn't understand food <laughs> even though I was losing weight I looked amazing I didn't understand health and now I feel like okay I literally have to go to the produce section and buy a bunch of zucchinis and cucumbers and tomatoes and bananas and all these things and like prep them and cook them it's not that difficult spinach you know like you feel like it's so difficult or you feel like oh that'll take forever you have to buy so many ingredients it's so expensive trust me it's not and it's so worth it and you just buy a bunch of food go to Sam's Club go to Costco buy a bunch of food and now you have food for the month I don't eat that many things right now I do eat a lot of the same kind of so it's just very easy to kind of like stock up on all your favorite foods that help you lose weight it's so much better than just buying pizza pockets and little pre-made dinners and things like that like that'll never get you to where you want just a bunch of pre-made dinners and that was my life story bitch that was my life story was just pre-made dinners and I really thought that was sustainable like no you have to learn how to cook so please highly recommend if you want to be even just healthy in general and you're not lo looking to lose weight learn how to cook I'm not obviously an amazing chef but like I know how to season things now I love garlic I put garlic in everything like actual fresh garlic cloves I will put them in the little garlic presser thing and I'll put that in my food like it's amazing the air fryer will be your best friend as well trust me if you do not have an air fryer I'm gonna need you to go purchase one right now because it has absolutely changed my life you don't need to put just frozen things in there because that's kind of what I thought before I was like oh let me just put my frozen everything in the air fryer no you can actually just cut up fresh food my favorite thing to do is to make zucchini fries and I actually don't bread them but you totally can and I'll just like basically cut up zucchini into little fry shapes I'll put it in the air fryer on 380 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes they're delicious they have like this really good taste to them I love zucchini I'm obsessed with zucchini so would definitely recommend having lots of greens in your diet like zucchini spinach Cucumber things like that. I pretty much eat those three things every single day. So yeah protein carbs and fats I balance it all. I love fruit smoothies Unsweetened almond milk is the number one thing if you're gonna have milk in anything Unsweetened almond milk you can put it in anything you can add fake sweetener You can add stevia oat milk is fucking delicious. It's my favorite milk on this planet earth Does it make me gain weight? Absolutely every time I I start drinking oat milk again I gain weight but it is very carb heavy like very carb heavy and a lot of times it does have a lot of sugar in it so unsweetened almond milk will definitely help you get to your goals I promise you can put unsweetened almond milk in your overnight oats in your oatmeal in your smoothies uh, in your cereal whatever you eat with milk if you don't take anything else from this video unsweetened fucking almond milk you want to avoid processed foods you want to avoid fast food you want to avoid going to places where they just add a bunch bunch of butter and salt and sodium and sauce and just things that will absolutely add so much calories and weight um, that's another thing I completely try to stay away from sodium if you guys want an amazing recommendation for a seasoning I use mrs. dash if you guys have heard of it mrs. dash seasoning it has no sodium in it so it's really amazing and I think it tastes so good I think we have the lemon pepper one and I put it on everything I season my boiled chicken with it I season my salmon with it and it's just lemon pepper with no sodium so a lot of people like to use garlic salt and things like that and that's amazing but it has a lot of sodium and that can make you retain water which will then make you not see progress on the scale because your weight isn't really going down and then you're like confused but and then it stresses you out and you stop dieting so you see how it kind of works so you kind of have to really do certain things like cut out even sodium I mean not all the time obviously but like certain things like that will just genuinely help you if you want to see a faster weight loss you want to see like a lot of progress cut down on the sodium cut down on the sauces I got a sugar-free barbecue sauce the other day and it's amazing and delicious and it keeps me on my diet um, I didn't even realize that barbecue sauce had a shit ton of sugar in it I had no idea I didn't even realize ketchup had a bunch of sugar in it so there's a lot of sauces 
ones that will definitely sneak up on you with sugar. Meal prepping is also really important. Um, maybe pick a day, like every Sunday, where you go make some chicken, you make some salmon, and you make a bunch of vegetables. You make literally whatever you want. You could make little air fried potatoes, sweet potatoes, and then you put it in a glass container. So I would recommend if you are serious about weight loss and just being healthy in general to get like some glass containers. You can get some from Costco or anywhere really and put your meal prep foods and just have them ready in your fridge so when you're hungry, you can immediately grab all your prepped foods. You can prep beans, you can prep a lot of stuff. And so when you're ready to eat, you just go in and you grab it out and you heat it up. You don't have to like go make every single meal every day and then it gets exhausting and you feel burnt out. Meal prepping is extremely, extremely important for health. Oh my gosh, okay, I'm looking at this now and I just have so much, I'm gonna read off my phone really quick, I'm sorry. Cook your protein for the next few days. If you're vegan, do tempeh and tofu. If you're not, do things like eggs, chicken, salmon. You wanna do meats that are very like high in protein and like just super clean, like lean meats like that. Ground turkey is a really good option as well. But yeah, I said pre-cooked quinoa. So these are things that you can make in your meal prep containers and you can like put in for the week. So you just go in, you scoop out some quinoa, put it on a plate, scoop out some chicken, put it on a plate and heat it up. But it's in the containers. I'm trying to like make sure this makes sense. Plain gold potatoes, I love baby gold potatoes. Sweet potatoes, black beans, chickpeas, roasted vegetables, rice, of course, rice, duh. Oh my God, I love jasmine rice right now, that's my shit. Red onions, cucumbers, zucchini, carrots, tomatoes, garlic, hard boiled eggs, bell peppers. Honorary mentions, half an avocado often, and hummus for anything. So all of those foods you're able to meal prep for the week. Um, and then like I said, I love having avocado all the time. And I also love hummus. I will eat hummus with literally anything and everything. Cutting out sugar is such a game changer, you guys, like you don't even understand. Cutting out sugar could be potentially the greatest factor of my weight loss because of how much I consumed sugar and how much I loved sugar and I don't mean fruit by any means I hate when people say fruit is unhealthy you like need fruit fruit is amazing fruit makes me feel alive fruit gives me energy fruit is carbs fruit is good sugar for your body I'm talking sugar like pastries donuts cookies cakes we want to cut all of that out, unfortunately, and you can totally give yourself a little cheat here and there. I would not recommend having full cheat days or full cheat weekends or anything like that until you are like way into your health and fitness journey. I would not recommend it. If anything, I would recommend a cheat like meal, not a cheat day or weekend consistently, especially in the beginning, but definitely give into your cravings here and there because that's the kind of thing that will keep you on track. But definitely try to stay away from sugar as much as possible and just try to lower that for your life because sugar is definitely a huge culprit for making people unhealthy and it definitely fucks with my mental health and it makes me feel sluggish and it makes me crash and it just doesn't make me feel good but it feels so good when you're eating it in the moment you know what I mean so it's just one of those things that's like you really don't need it um, take unnecessary sugar out of your diet the best place to start is with your coffee you know we kind of act like coffee is just like a breakfast thing but then we'll dress it up to be like 60 grams of sugar for our breakfast um, and that's just the coffee not even the actual breakfast itself that we're having so it's like you really have to cut out certain things like that and for me all my coffee is zero sugar so I use nut pods creamer which is a huge recommendation and sugar-free creamer so any sugar-free creamer of your choice that you can get at any grocery store and nut pods so I'll do half nut pods creamer half sugar-free that's exactly what I'm drinking right now and I do use instant coffee right now I use tasters choice um, Nescafe, I believe. I use Taster's Choice Instant. I make it really quick. I put in my nut pods and my sugar free and it tastes delicious. At first, it's gonna take a lot to get used to. It's gonna taste a little different. It's gonna taste a little weird, but I promise you just doing that alone, you will lose weight and you will see results and your body will just be healthier. Mental clarity is definitely more of a thing for me now. I do feel more like mentally alert and just happier and I'm just all around a different person just by changing the foods that I put in my body because if you really, really look at it and you stop turning a blind eye you have to eat every day all day to survive right all of that food is going through your body your body is processing it and keeping it stored in your body you know what I mean like obviously you're getting rid of some of it when you go to the bathroom but like you know what I mean like your body is taking that for fuel so whatever you're putting in your body is what you are like I truly understand you are what you eat now and it doesn't mean anything negative that's not like a negative thing to say it just means like you literally will be unhappy if you are feeding yourself processed fake 
take sugary foods. You, you will not have the capacity to be able to be fully alert and happy and energetic and excited. You have to feed your body the things that it really needs. Nutrients, you know, where you get from fruits and vegetables and proteins and healthy fats. Basically what I'm trying to say is anything from the earth, go for it. If it comes from the ground, eat it. If it's a McDonald's double cheese, maybe think twice. When I really understood what it means that their food still looks good after like 10 years, like somebody put it in a bag for 10 years and then opened it up and it looked the same, that's how fake it is and that's what it's doing to your body. So you really just have to like process things like that and be like, do I want to put that in my body? I'm not trying to be extra, I'm not trying to be annoying and like at all feel like I'm talking down to anybody that is going to McDonald's tonight, like at all. Like I was that bitch. I was eating fast food every single fucking day last year, okay? Uh, and most of my life. But then I start to really understand and learn health and fitness and I just know how good it's made me feel. I want you all to feel that way too and really just take some of these things into consideration and think about them and just understand how amazing it is to be healthy and feed your body the things that it really needs. Also with peanut butter, I was definitely eating regular peanut butter for a while, no problem with that but I do think that PB Fit, I think PB2 is similar, I'm not sure, but I use PB Fit that I got from Sam's Club and it has two grams of sugar for two tablespoons. You mix a little bit of water in it and it's eight grams of protein and like not even any fat. Like there's barely any fat. So basically you could eat like three times the amount of this peanut butter and it tastes really good. I love it, I put it in everything. Three times the amount of this peanut butter for like the amount of one serving of regular peanut butter. You could have like a little less than three servings of this this peanut butter for the same amount of calories as one serving of regular peanut butter but it even has less fat so like trust me go get some PB fit it's in powder form so you can put it in smoothies you can put it in shakes I put it in my overnight oats all the time I really really recommend starting your day with some overnight oats my recipe for that is oats unsweetened almond milk a little bit of vanilla extract chia seeds a little bit of sugar-free chocolate pudding powder if you want a PB fit powder and one little packet of stevia and I believe that that's it. I also every single day have to have forager yogurt and it's cashew milk yogurt and it's unsweetened. It's also vanilla bean flavored so it literally tastes like vanilla bean ice cream but there's no sugar in it or there's like one gram and it's cashew milk so it is dairy free. My other favorite thing, favorite favorite thing that I have probably every other day is my spinach juice. For that you just need a blender, you need some spinach, you can freeze the spinach if you want it to be extra cold which I would definitely recommend. So I would recommend like buying those big zip block baggies and like putting certain things in the freezer you could put frozen bananas in the freezer and you can put frozen spinach those are the two things that I use like almost every day because I make either a smoothie or protein shake or spinach juice every day so if I have frozen fruit frozen bananas and frozen spinach in the freezer then I can just have whenever I want it's ready to go I just make it really quick and I start drinking it so spinach juice is absolutely amazing and it's just spinach lemon and lime juice and turmeric and ginger and I will drink that every other day. It actually tastes pretty good. You get used to it. Yes, it kind of does taste like grass, but it's so healthy for you. And the ginger and turmeric really takes it to that next level of health. So definitely, definitely recommend that. I have smoothies all the time. I actually found out, it's a little fun fact, obviously fruit sugar is not bad. Eat the fruit. No matter how much sugar is in it, eat the fucking fruit. That's what I say. I used to eat blueberries all the time, but then I realized blueberries have like double, more than double the amount of sugar that strawberries have. So I went back to strawberries and now I'm obsessed with strawberry banana smoothies I just put frozen strawberries frozen bananas and unsweetened almond milk it's very simple you can add little additives if you want or whatever you think would make it taste extra good some yogurt but I usually just stick to those basic ingredients and sometimes I will add vegan vanilla protein to my smoothies I also do love the Vega protein from Target that is chocolate and greens and I'll just make it with unsweetened almond milk and frozen bananas. It's really, really good. So basically I have a type of drink for every mood. I have my strawberry banana smoothies when I'm in a fruity mood. I have my chocolate and greens protein shake when I'm in a chocolate shake mood. And I have my spinach juice. So I kind of am getting all of those really good nutrients in. I won't really like use those to replace meals. Sometimes if I'm not hungry, because I can say that once you start doing this and once you start losing weight, your appetite like will decrease. My appetite has decreased so much. 
I thought it would be the opposite, so I'm like kind of confused. Everyone's body is going to be so different, so you might not lose your appetite, you might gain more appetite, I don't know, but like for me personally, my appetite is not what it used to be, and I do not crave the things I used to crave, and I just feel like a completely different person. Once I started feeding my body less processed foods, even healthy processed foods, less processed foods, more real foods, my body said thank you, I'm satiated, I feel amazing, I don't need to eat constantly throughout the day, I don't feel hungry all the time because my body is satiated there's a difference you know what I mean like a lot of times when people are hungry they really just either need water or they need the right nutrients and then they just keep eating and then that's where the weight gain happens so it's just it's all really making sense to me now and hopefully this is like making sense and I can help you because I've just learned so much vegan protein bars are amazing I love the one plant protein from Target I get the chocolate peanut butter one and the churro one both very good I will have those once a day, probably, maybe once every other day. Make yourself some green tea at night uh, before your intermittent fast ends. That really helps like kind of keep you full, I find, uh, tea right before your intermittent fast ends. And I like to sometimes put turmeric and ginger in it, but I don't try to take too much turmeric and ginger because I don't know if I'm overdoing it or not. So just a basic green tea is really good before six o'clock or whenever your intermittent fast ends, if you decide to do that, or just before bed. Whenever it feels good, have some green tea. It's very good for you, full of antioxidants, and I think it's like good for your skin and stuff. Portions are huge, and I never wanted to hear that. I did not want to hear that. <laughs> Unfortunately, portions do matter a lot, and I never wanted to believe that. I wanted to believe I could eat like my boyfriend, and that I could eat whatever I wanted, and that I would just be fine. Hopefully my metabolism would take care of me. I could eat whatever, because I see all these people eating so much food. That doesn't mean I was them. That doesn't mean I had the metabolism of them. And I would just overfeed myself, and like obviously in America, we do have very big portion sizes. I've really started to learn. Once I'm eating, and I start to feel I'm satisfied the second my stomach tells me you are satisfied and even if I'm not done with my meal I'll put it back in the fridge and I'll save it for tomorrow I don't just keep eating anymore to eat I don't keep eating just to finish what I have in front of me I only eat till I'm full and I didn't understand this for so long I always just thought I have to finish this bowl like I I'm just gonna throw it away or whatever. It's like, no, you can just save it for tomorrow. You could save it for later tonight. Your body is telling you you're not hungry anymore. Why are you still going? Because it feels good? Because you wanna be extra full so that you're not hungry? Or you don't even have the potential to be hungry? It's like a mind game or something. It's like something we all do and it's completely normal to just keep eating once we're full, but does it make sense? No, not for weight loss. So I would definitely recommend cutting down your portions and I would definitely recommend stopping eating when you're full you can always have more but you can't have less might as well just kind of wait and slowly eat and see what happens and wait till that full feeling and then put it away until you get hungry again obviously listen to your hunger signs if you're hungry keep eating 100% but I'm starting to realize that now that I'm putting proper things into my body my body really is telling me when I'm full and I'm not overeating just naturally anymore okay this sounds kind of weird but like I kind of loved when my boyfriend would go through a drive-through like he'd go to Burger King he'd go to McDonald's which he actually has cut down a lot it felt so empowering you guys to go through a fast food drive-thru with somebody and not get anything and not get anything that doesn't mean you're not eating it means you're not getting anything from that establishment <laughs> it just means you know okay I'm gonna have what I just prepped myself for lunch a super healthy delicious filling carb filled protein filled green filled meal instead of grabbing this processed burger and processed fries and a coke which has like 40 grams of sugar plus in it. You know what I mean? I haven't had fast food in months. I never cheated, okay? It might sound too much for some people and I'm not saying that you should not cheat, but I have not had one cheat. One cheat meal, one cheat snack, one cheat anything since I started this diet on December 1st. It, today, it is like February 8th. She works, okay? And that does not, I have to say it 500 times, that does not mean you're not eating. It means you're not eating fast food. If you're somebody that eats fast food multiple times a week, just take that out alone and watch your weight drop. If you're somebody that drinks sugary Coke every day or sugary sodas, cut that out and watch your weight drop. You don't even have to go to extremes. You just have to learn what's healthy for your body and what's not. You don't have to starve, you just have to eat the right foods. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys some before and afters right now. We're gonna have a little bit of fun. Here's some before and afters. Okay, and 
And to close this video off, if you guys really quick want to talk about my arm lipo, let's check it out. So I got arm liposuction in December of 2020. I gained weight back after the liposuction and you could definitely tell. It made my arms very lumpy. It made them just look really weird to be honest. I actually hated my arms when I had gained weight. Now, I can't lie, that looks pretty fucking good. And I'm very thankful that I did it because now that I'm losing weight, my arms are like my dream arms kind of. Did I tell you guys that? Did I already say that yet? My current weight right now is 137. So I'm back at 137, which is insane because my lowest ever in my adult life was 134. My goal is 120, but now since this is kind of all happening really fast and I'm really understanding health, since I am so short, I might even shoot for 115. So I'm so, so, so excited, but I do want to keep like my booty. I do want to keep my curves. I'm naturally a curvy person. Um, I also went from a 31 inch waist to a 28.5 currently. I'm just very, very happy. But yeah, my arms look so good. So arm liposuction went very well. This was like kind of weirdly flubby. That's not as flubby anymore now that I've lost weight again. Like I'm actually lower weight than I was when I got it done. If you don't like something about yourself, work on it, actively work on it so that you can get to the place of loving yourself as much as you possibly can because we all need to love ourselves no matter what though. But I want you to do the things for you that are going to give you that extra confidence boost, that are going to give you that extra self love boost because when you love yourself and you feel good and you feel confident, you do better in the world. You do better by people and you live a better life. And what do I want for you guys? To live the best possible life that you can. And that's exactly what I'm doing for myself. My life has went from zero to 100 in the last two months and it's not just because of weight which I'm gonna make another video kind of talking about weight stuff soon. Maybe in the next month or two, we're gonna talk about it. It's gonna be actually very interesting because it's a topic that I feel like not everybody can speak on because not everybody has been bigger and smaller. Not everybody goes on a weight loss journey. Some people are always small and some people are naturally bigger and some people don't fluctuate and stuff, but me having been the bigger girl and the smaller girl now, kind of, or just a few times in my life as well, like there's definitely some things that I notice of how people treat you and whatnot and I really wanna talk about it. And it's very, very, interesting. You don't have to do anything to change your body for anybody else. Do it for you. Do not do it for a boy. Do not do it for anything but yourself. I did not do this for anybody but myself, okay? So that is my TED Talk. My camera's gonna die. I hope you guys learned something from this. If you guys want a part two or you guys want me to do a Q&A on this or something, I would gladly do that. Just let me know. Make sure to follow me on all my links down below. Subscribe to my OnlyFans. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day and I will see your lovely, beautiful faces in my next video. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.